Buenas noches. Si necesitan traducción en español, si necesitan traducción en español, por favor, la segunda mesa de ese lado vamos a tener traducción en español. Salam alaikum, have an accent of good Bahan of Somali wa Alkas, Miskas. Good evening, everyone. If you would find your way to a seat, we will be starting in just a few minutes, starting in just a few minutes. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. We are about two minutes away from start, so if you have not found that coveted seat, please do so. Also, if you are a facilitator in the room, would you please stand? If you're a facilitator in the room. If your table, and you're sitting at a table that does not have a facilitator and there's open space, please fill in those open spaces so that we can include you in our conversations. So please find a facilitator. Thank you. Ready to go? Oh, right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you would do me a favor and do this. I am testing for sound, so that means I can be heard in the back. If I can't be, someone from the side will come and tell me. Good evening, good evening, welcome, welcome, and welcome. Thank you for braving the heat advisory. Hope We're going to hope to keep you as cool <laughs> as we possibly can tonight. Before we get started, I would like to introduce a land acknowledgement to ground us a little bit. Before we begin, Seattle Public Schools acknowledges that we are on the ancestral lands and the traditional territories of the Puget Sound Coast Salish people. I'm gonna pause for just a minute to let that sink in and also for our interpreters. Thank you for joining us this evening, Seattle Public Schools leadership and the School Board of Directors we're thanking you for joining us on their behalf, on our behalf, to come into a very, very important conversation. I'm your host, Beverly Redmond, Chief of Staff for Seattle Public Schools. It's great to see you. Please note that we are streaming over SPS YouTube. The individuals in our extended audience can certainly hear and see me right now. There will be portions of the conversation, however, where we're breaking out at tables and they will not be able to hear every word, but they will be able to capture the essence of what we're doing tonight. So thank you to SPS TV for extending our reach tonight. Also want to welcome any members of our media that may be here or may be watching us live. They have been covering us since we've started the conversations and we certainly welcome them extending our reach. I would also like our board members, if you are an SPS board member, would you please stand? Would you please stand? Thank you for being here. I think I have put them on the spot at least three times this week or over the last couple of weeks, plan to do it at least three more throughout these conversations, not because they are just hungry for applause. Not at all. They're hard workers, but just to let you know where they will be in the room, when you see them walking by, they're listening. They're wanting to gather your input. They want to hear from you. There are decisions, huge decisions that have to be made, and your input guides us along the way. So thank you so much, board members, for being here. I know that being on this particular tour has, it's required a lot of all of us, but particularly them. So thank you very much for being here. So why are we indeed here? We're here to share in how to reimagine our schools. How to reimagine a school system in the face of some budget challenges. We are here to become better, to become stronger, to become more equitable. 
we have to evaluate how to create and to pay for a just school system that puts every student on the path to success. We're calling this concept well-resourced schools, and we need your ideas on how to create them. We're wanting to make our schools better for generations to come. What we enjoy now, we don't take for granted. We want to secure our legacy as a school district for many, many generations to come. You'll hear more from Dr. Jones, our superintendent, and also from Dr. Ricardo Torres, who's coming, and they will explain what will happen tonight in terms of the concept of well-resourced schools and also how we are going to proceed through the evening. Our goals, it's conversation tonight. It's about how to gather input. It's about appreciating each other. So your comfort level tonight I want that to be on 10. I want you to be able to give of yourself and your voice to establish vision values that we will use to thread some important conversations regarding well-resourced schools and also many other planning efforts that the district has to endure and go through this year. We've organized, as you've heard me mention, several engagement sessions. We are at spot three of five in-person sessions on our well-resourced schools tour. We've been going around to each of the regions of our district to have this similar conversation. And we will conclude on August 29th with an opportunity to have an online community session. These have been, I would say, very heartwarming sessions because it's us shoulder to shoulder talking about the needs of our students, and I'm excited about what we will do tonight. Timeline. Let's talk about what we know thus far, what we've promised, that there are no consolidations or closures planned for the next school year, 23-24. And what's coming up as we get into the school year, September 2023, give us a little bit to get you in school and get you started, and we will be releasing a survey. While it's very important that we have gathered in person, there are many more people to reach, so we want to make sure that we're putting out another opportunity to gather that input. So please look for that district-wide survey. When we conclude, we'll be delivering all of that information, packaging it, to go to Dr. Jones, who has an incredible plan to deliver to us in November 2023. Everybody say November. That's the date, that's the area of the year that we're tracking toward in terms of releasing a plan for the future of our schools. You've heard me mention Dr. Jones' name. He is here tonight, and I will tell you that he is a graduate, certainly rem refreshing memories that he's a graduate of Seattle Public Schools. He's had a child come through our schools. He is in many ways the SPS success story. But he doesn't want that just for himself. He wants that for every student that comes through our schools. You'll hear him say that dollar for dollar, he believes Seattle Public Schools is the best choice for children but that doesn't come accidentally. That means we have to roll up our sleeves together, have some challenging conversations, and go to work on securing our future. With that, Dr. Brent Jones. Thank you, Bev. Um, if you're here for well-resourced schools conversation. Raise your hand. I just want to make sure we're all in the same room. Okay. So uh, I just want to thank you all for taking time out of your uh, uh, steamy evening to be here tonight to talk about well-resourced schools. Uh, I saw one of my friends coming in, and uh, she jammed me up and said, why don't you just call it what it is, uh, school consolidations? Well, that's not what it is. We're talking about how do we have this this dialogue with community about what do our schools need to look like in the future? What, what should the, how should we use building space? What kind of programs do we need to have? What kind of services do we need to have? And then we work from that to 
build a budget, to build a strategic plan. And so this whole well-resourced schools dialogue is about who do we want to be? What kind of experience do we want to have with our, with our students? Uh, what kind of uh, partner do we want to be to community? And so if, if you all can just preserve the, the, the thought that we have a predestined list of schools that we're going to close, we don't. That may actually happen, believe it or not. But that's not the goal here. The goal is what do we want to have an ideal system of well-resourced schools? In many respects, you're sitting in a well-resourced school. There, there's, a, there's a lot of things that are happening here at South Shore K-8 that could be considered to be a well-resourced school. So uh, with all that said, in the background, uh, many of you know that we are having uh, budget challenges locally, regionally, nationally, uh, and we're at a financial crossroads. And we must evaluate how do we create and pay for a just school system that keeps and puts every student on the pathway to success. The hard truth is that as much as we love all of our schools, when they're under-enrolled, they're unable to provide the sufficient level of staff, libraries, athletic facilities, up-to-date technology, programming. And so there is an economy of scale when we start talking about schools. This lack of enrollment that we've been experiencing is one of the reasons that we're facing, that we faced a, a $131 million budget crisis last year that we reconciled, and that we are going to have another $105 million to deal with in 2024-25. So how we will address this, um, we believe that there's a way to ensure success for every student by developing an appropriately funded and well-resourced set of schools. We are here today to prioritize and evaluates what's more, evaluate what's most important for our students. Uh, someone wise said, we can do anything, but we can't do everything. I want you to hold on to that as you think about our dialogue today. And this means that we're going to need to use our funding judiciously and being responsible and strategic with the resources that are available to us to create schools where students thrive. That means offering a broad spectrum of resources and educational choices that students not just, not just need, but students and families want. And so well-resourced schools are places where students have access to opportunities, not only those living in wealthier neighborhoods, but in all neighborhoods. In their neighborhood schools, you should be able to go get those services and those programs that you need. So I know that we talked about school consolidation. I let out with that. Uh, and I know that that uncertainty sparks anxiety, but I want to be clear. We are not consolidating or closing any schools in 23-24 uh, school year. There's no list of schools to choose from. Now, if that happens to be the case, like I mentioned, then so be it. But right now, we're focusing on what services do you want, what programs do you want, and how should we use our building spaces wisely? So before I turn this over to Dr. Torres, I just want to thank you again for uh, giving your time today. Uh, this engagement is important for us as a leadership team to understand uh, your perspective where we need to go from here. So without further ado, I'd like to bring up Associate Superintendent Dr. Rocky Torres. Thank you so much. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I have the privilege of being uh, running some of the logistics for us this evening. So first, I'm just going to explain a little bit about how the evening's going to go, and then we're going to jump right in into our first, our first question and conversation. So there are SPS staff throughout the space this evening. Some people are at tables to be facilitators, so they're going to be helping you facilitate your conversations, getting the thoughts out, et cetera. And there's also staff around that are scribes. So if you see some people with laptops or just around capturing conversation and notes, so we can get all of those notes back and all of that qualitative data as uh, Chief Redman was saying, so that we can pass that on forward to Dr. Jones ultimately for a decision. So essentially what is going to happen is I'm going to open up with a topic and then I'll give everybody a framing question. Then we'll do five minutes of silent thinking and write time. There's post-it notes at the table for everybody. There's pens out there. So you're just going to take time to think. Think about the question. If you have a story that relates to it, your thoughts, your feelings, whatever that may be, we're going to do that for five minutes. At that time, I'm going to say, all right, our five minutes are up. Now we're going to get into 15 minutes of conversation. So your table facilitator is going to facilitate a conversation for you all. When that is done, I will say that we are done with this portion of conversation. Have facilitators put hands up. 
So we'll get the room quiet so that we can then talk about what were some of the themes. There's some runners running around the room you'll see, and they're collecting themes of things that they're hearing consistently so that we could at least give back to you all in a timely way two to three of the high-level themes per topic we're hearing. After that, we'll have a minute to take your post-it notes, any charts, anything you have, and just post them. Each of these chart papers has a topic on them. So for example, our first topic for the evening is going to be buildings, the actual physical plant of buildings. So you're going to put your notes under the post-it that says buildings. And then we will pause, and then I'll start with the next framing question, the next topic, and then we'll move from there. So without further ado, I'm going to start us in our first topic and our first framing question of the evening. Our first topic has to do with school buildings and learning spaces. SPS facilitators, if you see that you need to pull some clusters, some tables together, please do so so we can engage in conversation. But our first topic is school buildings and learning spaces. Your framing question. What are your favorite things about our school buildings? What are your favorite things about our school buildings? Five minutes, think and write time, begin now. Just about three more minutes of think time and write time. Just around three more minutes of think time and write time. Once again, framing question. What are your favorite things about your school building and or our school buildings? What are your favorite things about our school buildings?
Just about one more minute until we get into open conversation. About one more minute. Think time and write time. Framing question. What are your favorite things about our and or your school buildings? Okay, facilitators, 15 minutes. Conversation on this topic. Facilitators, if you could begin, 15 minutes on this topic. Thank you.
Time check. We have 11 more minutes on this topic and conversation. 11 more minutes on this topic and conversation. Thank you. Time check facilitator, seven more minutes on this topic and conversation. Seven more minutes on this topic and conversation.
time check. We have just over three minutes left on this conversation and topic. Just over three minutes on this conversation and topic. Two more minutes on this topic and conversation. Two more minutes. Okay, facilitators, hands up. Facilitators, hands up. Dr. Laura Davis Brown. Trish, I see you. Dr. Laura Davis Brown, I see you. Who else is out there? Executive Director Hunt, thank you so much. I see you. Chris Carter, thank you so much. I see you. Principal Encarnacion. All right, here we go. We're going to go with our first set of themes for our first topic. So here's some of the overarching themes. And the first one is interesting, but I also agree we're in the middle of a heat wave, so it does say updated ACs and HVAC for all of our schools, just side note. <laughs> the next one, open green spaces and or play fields. Access for all students, including students with disabilities. Spaces to bring the community together. Clean, bright, and accessible spaces. Outdoor play spaces that are secure and safe. And finally, performance spaces in our schools. So one minute, if you could, please take your post-it notes and post them now, and then we're going to switch to our second topic. So one minute, if you could please take any of your notes that you have and post them up on the chart paper. One minute.
10 more seconds before we get into our next framing question and topic. 10 more seconds. Okay, facilitators, hands up. Here we go. Topic number two. Topic number two. Our second topic for the evening focuses on support services and resources. Support services and resources. So when you're thinking of this, this could be right now needs funds. This could be mental health supports in schools. So we're on support services and resources. Framing question. How could we make resources and or services at each school stronger? Framing question. How could we make resources and or services at each school stronger? Please take five minutes of think and write time now. Five minutes of think and write time. Just over three minutes for think and write time. The framing question is, how do we make resources and or services at each school stronger? The topic is support services and resources. Just over two minutes before facilitated conversation. Two more minutes.
Okay, facilitators, if you can open conversation, 15 minutes of conversation on this topic, 15 minutes of conversation on this topic. Thank you.
facilitators. We have about nine more minutes on this topic and conversation. Just around nine more minutes on this topic and conversation. Thank you. Five more minutes. Facilitators, five more minutes on this topic and conversation. Five more minutes.
Two more minutes, two more minutes. Okay, facilitators, hands up, hands up. Dr. Campbell, thank you so much. Dr. Laura Davis-Brown, thank you so much. Dr. Pritchett, thank you so much. Trish Nesbitt, I see you, thank you so much. Okay, we're gonna get into our themes from our second topic. Here are some of our themes. Second topic is support services and resources. One, clarity for schools on PTSA funding and use of funding for staffing. Two, clarity on the staffing available for each school. Like what is the baseline that we're doing at each school? And finally, alignment on available resources between the district, the city, and community partners. Alignment on available resources between the district, city, and community partners. If you could please take your post-its and get them posted. One minute and then we'll get into our final framing question and conversation. One minute to post your post-it notes up on chart paper. Fifteen more seconds before our last question and last topic of the evening. Okay, facilitators, hands up. Facilitators, hands up. Oh, I see you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Dr. Conti, thank you. I see you. I see you. All right. Executive Director Carter, I see you. Thank you so much. Dr. Mercer, I see you. Katrina Hunt, thank you so much. Kane Lowry, thank you so much. Okay. Final topic and framing question of the evening. Final topic and framing question. Our topic is academic and extracurricular programs. Academic and extracurricular programs. These would be such as music programs, sports, etc. just to give you an example. Framing question. What kinds of programs do you and or your student value the most and why? 
The topic is academic and extracurricular programs. The framing question is, what kinds of programs do you and or your student value the most and why? Five minutes of think and write time starts now. Three more minutes. The topic is academic and extracurricular programs. The framing question. What kinds of programs do you and or your student value the most and why? Two more minutes of think and write time. Two more minutes. Okay, facilitators, if you could begin table conversations. Facilitators, please begin table conversations. 15 minutes on this topic.
just over 11 minutes on this topic and conversation just over 11 minutes Thank you.
Time check. Just over six minutes left on this topic and conversation. Just over six minutes on this topic and conversation. Two more minutes, two more minutes.
One minute. One minute left. Okay, facilitators, hands up. Facilitators, hands up. Thank you, Dr. Pritchett. Thank you, Tony Talbert. Thank you, Kane. I see you. Thank you, Trish. Thank you, Executive Director Carter. Thank you, Dr. Campbell. All right, here we go. For our last topic of the evening, we were talking academic and extracurricular programs. Some of the overarching themes, the idea of having all programs at all schools, meaning music, art, theater, sports, and languages. The idea that we have after school activities and that all of these activities be inclusive of students regardless of ability and or disability. Without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Chief Beverly Redmond to close us out. One minute to post your post-its. Thank you, everyone. As you're coming back to your tables, to your seats, thank you, thank you, thank you for those last posts. Thank you, everyone. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Would you please do me a favor? For our interpreters tonight, would you please give them a round of applause? They are often the unsung heroes of our meetings, but we cannot make them go and function well without them. So thank you so much for every comment, for every person who facilitated, for our scribes who their hands should be just smoking on the keyboards. Thank you so much for everything that you've done tonight. As we are concluding this conversation, this portion of the conversation, I want to revisit what our agreements are, where we started the meeting. What you know for sure is that coming into next school year, there will not be any consolidations or closures for 23-24. I'm happy about it. <laughs> so there will not be, for the upcoming school year, consolidations or closures. We are headed into, at the start of the school year, another a survey, a chance for additional input that will be coming your way. As I mentioned earlier, let us get the school year started. Let's get the students in the classrooms, the teachers back, everyone back, and you will look into your email and you will see another chance to offer your input regarding well-resourced schools. If you think this conversation, the room was full, Imagine everyone across this district on the same note having a similar conversation. That is what the survey will represent. All of that information, coupled with the information from nights like these, will go to Dr. Jones. He has an incredible task ahead of him. 
and he will be delivering a decision regarding well-resourced schools in November. So we're gonna bookmark that month, that that is when the plan will be released. Upcoming sessions, we're headed north. We'll be at Nathan Hale tomorrow night, 6 p.m. And then on Thursday, I believe that's the 17th, we will conclude the in-person sessions at Robert Eagle Staff. There will be a online session, August 29th. Right now, I believe we have over 300 respondents for that. So that's gonna be a very robust conversation. Please continue to spread the word to come out to have, to talk to us, give us that feedback. We are certainly desirous of that. We want community engagement to count. We want it to count. So with that, everyone, I want you to have a good night. Stay cool. Hang tight with your families. Take care of yourselves. Have a good evening.